I'll probably make a flash decision at the last minute, which is usually uh, my way of existing. So, I am currently in process of getting ready, as you might be able to tell by the bobby pins in my hair. I'm going to go to my mum's and hang out with her to have a sewing day. I've been planning on using some of the fabrics from her stash that I acquired. One of them is this really gorgeous wool that I'd quite like to make some kind of winter skirt or winter pinafore thing out of. I was thinking about things to go with that and realised that I have this pattern. Ruched around the neck, ruched around the arm type situation. This pattern is cut for stretch fabric and I will be using not stretch fabric. Because of that I'm not entirely sure how it will turn out so I need to find a fabric that I would like a shirt out of but that I'm also willing to kind of sacrifice a little bit so I need to figure out which fabric that is. When I put together this collection of the lightweight fabrics that my mum had given me I actually made myself a handy little list of what was in there and what I might be interested in using it for. There has been the addition of this grey silk. I think I bought this as a remnant off eBay. It isn't hugely exciting, so this is up for consideration. It should also be noted that I'm going to need about one and a half metres to make this shirt, so I also need to choose things that I actually have one and a half metres of. Yeah, not this. See, this is one of those things I'm sure people will shout at me in the comments because it's like a really beautiful Liberty print, but I'm not actually hugely attached to it, so also up for consideration. It depends how much I have. Oh dear. Oh, oh, someone's fraying. Not you, not you, not you. Definitely not you, because I like you. I think it's between the Liberty and the Grey Silk. Okay, so I only have a metre of the pink flowery Liberty print. I have two metres of the Grey, so logically I should take the Grey. However, I actually like the Grey more than the Liberty print. I'm not actually intending on making this top the full length, so there is a possibility that I'd be able to make it out of less than 1.3 to 1.5 meters. Mm. I think I might just take both of them with me, see if we can, as my grandmother would say, colifogal it, which basically just means let's see if we can somehow find a bizarre way of making it work, even though it shouldn't. Fingers crossed we can do that. We have arrived at the mothership's home. Can you tell that we're not very good at finishing projects? Heads up that I'll be mixing metric and imperial measurements in this video. I grew up between Britain and North America and I had to deal with that, so now you do too. Now I started this blouse the way I start all projects that use a pattern, by cutting out the pattern pieces. There was a front, back and side piece as well as the neck band, so overall it was a pretty simple pattern. I then laid the fabric out as the pattern instructions decreed, placing the paper pattern pieces on it and trying to figure out how I could arrange the pieces to make the best top I could with technically too little fabric. If you've never used a commercial pattern before or are new to sewing, it's worth knowing that the way commercial patterns lay out their pieces on fabric is almost always, in my experience anyway, hugely wasteful, and it is entirely possible to make the garment with slightly less fabric than the pattern recommends. Just be aware of grain lines if you're going to shift around the pattern piece placement. I think it would be better for me to do it as a size large crop top than as a smaller size. Do you agree? Yes, you can always make things smaller but you can't make things bigger. Indeed. Music back? Yeah. Now with that decision made, I weighed down my pattern so I could avoid pin marks in my delicate fabric and cut out all of the pieces for the blouse. The reason I chose a rotary cutter for this job is it allowed me to be relatively precise with my cuts and meant I didn't have to worry about the layers of fabric shifting while I was cutting, which can happen when cutting silky fabrics with scissors, just in case you don't sew so you don't know, that's bad. It means your pieces won't be symmetrical if it's one piece cut on the fold or they won't match if it's two pieces. I pinned all of the fabric pieces together and sewed the seams on the body of the blouse. I decided to do French seams to trap the raw edges of the fabric inside the seam to protect them from fraying. If you don't know what French seams are, I will pop an explanation and some resources in the description. I next ran gathering threads around the neckline. After that, I pinned the neckband, which I had seamed and enforced with interfacing, to the blouse, making sure to match up the relevant notches. Then it was time to gather the blouse to the neckband by pulling the gathering threads and gently zhuzhing the gathers into place so they were as even as possible before sewing all of that together. I used my mum's infinitely handy seam gauge while folding over and pinning the neckband in place. I then hand felled the inside edge down to finish the neck and encase all the raw edges. 
So I ran out of steam, I did start the top. I only have the gathering on the sleeves and the hem of the bottom to do and that's done. I haven't started the skirt yet. I decided instead of leaving it at my mum's and going back another day, I'd bring it all back here and give it a go, like, tomorrow. When I can gather the strength. Hello again, greetings, humans. It's the next day. I am going to attempt to cut out the piece that I need for the skirt, the pinafore. I still haven't decided if I'm making a skirt or a pinafore. I'll probably make a flash decision at the last minute, which is usually my way of existing. So I want to get those cut out. I would like to get them sewn together and to finish the top. There's other stuff I need to do today as well, so I don't know if I'm going to get that done, but I will give it a valiant attempt. And so I did. I hemmed the bottom of the shirt by taking a small turn and seaming it in place and then turned that up again, pinning it in place and once again sewing that down. I then moved on to cutting out the pieces for the circle skirt. I took my waist measurement, added seam allowance for a single seam and divided that number by 6.28 to get the radius of my waist measurement. I folded the fabric into quarters and laid it out and creating a makeshift compass with my measuring tape and a pin, drew out the quarter circle for my waist. Twig was very curious and came to say hi while I used the same compass method to draw out the bottom edge of the skirt using all the space I could on the fabric. I wanted the skirt to be as long as possible. I pinned along the edges to stop them from shifting and cut along the chalk lines I had drawn for myself. And because I wanted as little waste as possible on this project, I gathered the scraps and did some calculating. 34, 35, 17, 38, to see if I could make the rest of the pinafore out of the cabbage. I cut bias strips to seam together for the waistband and I cut placket pieces out of the circle left from the waist using a cardboard pattern lovingly created for me by Hamish. So I got my hem done on the shirt I was working on. I have yet to do the edges of the sleeves. It is like two days later. While I was sewing the hem of that top, I moved. I moved too vigorously and I bashed my knee really, really hard on the table. Hard enough that I broke part of the table, but also hard enough that I couldn't put weight on that leg for more than a day. So, took a break from sewing. I would like to get the elasticated parts of the top finished so that that is done and dusted, and I would like to sew together the full circle pinafore. All of the pieces are cut out. All of them are waiting to be sewn up, assembled, etc. Also, I don't know if I explained this, but I'm not actually working with any kind of pattern for the circle skirt pinafore, partly because to make a full circle skirt, you don't really need a pattern. And to be honest, I wasn't certain if I wanted to make the pinafore. I'm still not. So I'm going to make the front part of the pinafore. And if I'm not happy with it, I just won't attach it. It's a really misty day today. I kind of want to get it all done today during daylight so that I can take some nice whimsical running around in the mist photos and video. We'll just have to see how it goes. Spoiler alert, it did not go quickly enough for whimsical misty adventures, but I did make good progress. I finished the arms by taking some thin elastic, cutting lengths of it that would sit comfortably around my elbows and overlapping it and pinning it to the very edge of the inside of the sleeve at regular intervals to create a smooth elasticated gather. I then sewed along this, stretching the elastic to match the fabric, turned it under to hide the raw edges, pinned it in place and sewed along it again. Once again, stretching the elastic while I did so, and with that, the blouse was finished. The neighbor's cat has come to say hi. This is Rudy, he lives next door. It was time to move on to sewing all of the bits for the pinafore. I seamed together two of the scrap pieces I had been left with when cutting out the circle skirt to create a chevron that would make up the bulk of the pinafore bib. I also seamed two bias cut strips at a 45 degree angle and attached another bias cut strip seamed with a 90 degree angle to make a strip long enough for the waistband. At this point my sewing machine decided to throw a hissy fit and I had to do battle with it. Later on however it relented and I undertook the task of zigzag stitching over the raw edges of the circle skirt to prevent the wool from fraying. I had cut up one side of the circle skirt piece so I had somewhere to place an opening so I basically sewed around the entire piece in one go. It took some time, quite a bit of time, 10 and a half minutes to be precise, and I was very bored of zigzagging by the time it was done. 
I had cut long strips for the straps that I folded right sides together, seamed to make them into tubes, and turned right sides out. I followed the same process of right sides together, seam, and fold out with the pieces for the placket, which I then pinned to the circle skirt piece and seamed in place. I then pinned all along the side seam of the skirt, taking particular care where the two placket pieces met, and sewed along that seam. Again, taking care at the plackets to backstitch a few times to reinforce the area. Because that point in the seam will be moved a lot, pulled open and closed, it was really important to make sure that it was strong. Just realised I've put one of the plackets on the wrong side of the fabric, so I now have the joy of unpicking that and doing it again with the side seam already done. Fun. I did do that, but I also took some time to try out the bib of the pinafore to see how it needed to be altered by pinning it to my cardigan so I could keep it in place. Based on that, I did some measuring, some marking up, and some cutting. So now that I have scrap pieces from the side, I can use them to fill out this space. Right, the plan is to piece those new little triangles onto the pinafore piece and then trim the neck to the right shape. And then, then I will cut out a piece of lining the same shape and size as the pinafore front, use the lining to do a mock-up. I feel like that'll be simpler than trying to perfectly figure out darts on the stripes as I go. I'm tired and I think that'll melt my brain a bit at this point. So I did just that pieced the small triangles to the pinafore front to create a section wide enough for the bib, cut off the dangly corners of excess fabric on each side, and then cut out the neck shape so that it followed the chevron of the centre front. After that, I took some measurements from the pinafore bib so I could make a pattern for my lining piece. Fit it on me so I knew where to put any darts, pinned it to some scraps of black silk my mum had given me from her stash, and cut it out. I marked the darts and sewed those in both the lining and the wool of the bib. I seamed the silk and the wool right sides together. <gasps> Panicked because I thought my sewing machine had decided to malfunction again. Thankfully though, I was able to continue, taking a few small gathers in the silk to make it shape to my body and the inside of the bib better. And then I checked out the right side to see how it was looking. With right sides of the wool and silk together again, I took one of the shoulder straps and inserted it between the silk and the wool, pulling the edge of it out of the hole I'd just left and trying to get the strap as flat as possible. Just, just really, really nestle it in there. I pinned that in place to avoid slippage and sewed across the top of that opening so that when I turned it right sides out, the raw edges of the bib and the straps would be between the outer shell and the lining. I then took a tiny bit of time away from the sewing machine to fold and press the waistband in preparation for its attachment. So it is nearly one o'clock in the morning and I haven't finished yet. My sewing machine decided to stop working partway through the day and I had to faff around with fixing it. Oh my goodness, I did not get as many things as I wanted to done. So in terms of stuff left to do, I have two seams, a tiny bit of hand stitching and one big ass hem, and then I will be finished. Oh, and buttons and buttonholes. That's important. Need to do those. I hate buttonholes so much. I will get back to you when I do more stuff, but I'm going to bed now. That's the plan. Anyway, I'm tired. It is the next day. I have slept. I'm going to do the things I said I would do last night. My mum is here helping and doing some hand stitching while I do machine stitching. Okay, let's get up in this. Attaching the waistband was an interesting adventure. Generally when you make a skirt with a waistband, at least one of those pieces is cut on the straight grain of the fabric. The straight grain of non-stretch fabrics does just that, not stretch. However, when you cut woven fabric on the bias, it does have some stretch. To prevent the fabric from completely stretching out of shape though, you want to attach bias cut fabric to straight grain fabric. I completely failed to consider this when planning my minimal waist use all the scraps garment, and so was faced with the task of sewing a waistband cut on the bias to a circle skirt opening, much of which was also on the bias, while desperately trying to keep it in shape. It was needless to say, quite a challenge. Thankfully I prevailed and turned the waistband over to the inside of the skirt, catching all the raw edges and, as best I could, stitching in the ditch to secure it down. I decided that I was very pleased indeed with the pinafore bib, so pinned it behind the waistband of the skirt and attached it with a line of stitching. 
I then added a second line of stitching to secure it more strongly, which was also a challenge as the bottom edge of the bib wasn't actually straight. Oh dear. So I was sewing over different thicknesses of fabric. To finish the seams, I pulled the loose threads inside the garment, tied them off, threaded them in and cut away the excess. The waistband is done, the pinafore is attached, and the ends of the straps for the pinafore bib have been lovingly hand sewn by my mum. I have now rigged it up with clips to let it hang for a few days so that any of the fabric that is on the bias has a chance to stretch out and we can recut the end of the skirt so that it hangs straight before it gets hemmed. Now sadly I forgot to film anything to do with hemming or adding buttonholes but it did happen and I did finish it so now we move on to the reveal. So, yes, the things are done. It's very exciting. Pretty pleased with how both of them turned out. I think with the blouse, it's ended up a really nice shape for me. Although I do think if I make this pattern again, I'm going to recut the pattern because the seams under the arms are a little bit close into my underarm, which isn't too surprising because while I didn't have to recut the pattern to make it fit me correctly because of the change, in fabric. The pattern was designed for jersey stretch fabrics. One of the things that I didn't think about was that if you make something out of jersey, the seams can stretch, whereas if you make something out of a woven fabric, the seams can't. I think one of the only things I would work on doing differently, I rushed through doing my gathering threads a bit because I find it unbelievably boring. I am seeing the results of that, which is that my gathering is not as good as it could be or as good as I would like it to be. So when I make another blouse from this pattern, I'm going to make a point of being more careful and considerate about my gathering threads. Either that or ask Hamish to do it because he, like a maniac, doesn't mind hand sewing. Really happy with how the pinafore turned out. For something that I didn't use any pattern pieces for and was completely improvised, I think it turned out really well and it fits me really well because it's a full circle skirt the stripe changes direction across the different directions of fabric and I think that looks really interesting. I think I did a damn good job. It's definitely going to be like a cozy winter item of clothing. I don't know how many more circle skirts I'm going to make though because oh my god the hemming. The hemming takes so long. I want to go and do the maths and figure out how much hemming was actually involved in that. I feel like I owe it to myself to find out. I I think both items turned out really well. There are small things that I could definitely adjust, and I will, but I'm really pleased. And especially as I haven't made myself an item of clothing in quite a long time, I feel very accomplished for having managed to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this strange foray into my making process. If you would like to check out other things that I get up to, then feel free to watch other videos of mine or subscribe to my channel. I hope everything is okay in your world, and I will see you next time. One more. My hair is... well, it's having a moment. Look, I yellow crested warbler. Floof about. <laughs> Surprisingly, like, moody lighting. I feel very... if this was black and white, it would look very sort of film noir. All I need is a hat. That would make it. That'd be the one. And eat some chocolate is important. Goodbye, farewell, after we descend, good night, etc.